multi dimensional interval. Okay. It's very easy to always work with it. You just have to do what? You have to do the higher and Taylor expansion. Okay, so, so imagine I have n Brownian motions. So imagine W1 of T, W2 of T, WM of T be independent. Independent body motions. So all these are independent body motions. And imagine I'm defining uh, <coughs> and processes. So x1 is in bracket of t, x2 of t, and so on and so forth. B and eto processes actually. Okay? These are into processes. So very generic kind of picture. And assume that each of the eco process, X T I, okay, could be I could be from one to n. Okay. Can be written as you know, x i evaluated at a, the a is you know, initial instant plus say a to t, okay, mu i of s ds plus sum that goes from i equals to 1 to m, okay. And integral from A to T, F I J of S, this would be J from 1 to M, F I J of S, and it's integral with respect to the J from the motion actually. So, what does this horrible picture mean? This is simple. So, I have an ETO process okay, in which I have one drift, but previously we talked about that, okay, there is one kind of Brownian motion added into it, but now it's, there are M Brownian motions added. Sir, how are they different from each other? I mean, I'm not Sorry. getting this. How is W1 different so, from W2? So the Brownian motion is, is, is not just a process, it's a category of the processes actually. So there is a wide class of processes which are Brownian motion, okay? We're going to do theorem, what do you call, um, Levick, you know, characterization theorem, that, 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 that in, in which we're going to see that how to construct new Brownian motions, you know, using the existing Brownian motions actually, okay, so the Brownian motion is not just one and unique thing, so you can have, so, so these all are random quantities, random processes, okay, and being independent, okay, behave like Brownian motion, but they are independent actually, oh, yes, 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 yes. At, at any time t, you know, uh, they are independent. Okay. So why why this is an interesting factor? So what we are saying that imagine I have a process, a bunch of process that has a drift, but <coughs> something that is creating randomness is in it is not just one source, but there are m sources which are kind of creating, you know, m kind of there are m sources of randomness that are creating a randomness here. Are you getting the point? Okay. So really generalizing what you were doing previously. So if I, for example, write you know this and so all this in a vectorial notation, let me denote w of t by a vector w one of t up to w m of t. Okay. And uh, by xp, I'm going to mean vector with the n components x1 of t up to xn of t. Okay. And these drifts, how many are going to be drifts? So it's going to be a matrix actually, n by m. Okay. Because in, e in each i there are j diffusions, sorry. 
Drift se řekl jediný. Drift se So let let me call it say mu. Okay. And the mu is this vector mu one of t. And mu of t is this mu one of t. Mu two of t, so on and so forth. And mu n of t. Uh, n of t. Fine. N sir. N yes. N of t. And the matrix. For example, let's call it uh, sigma of t. Right. Ah, sorry, it's not f, but it's let's call it sigma i j. Okay, so it's better to call it sigma. <coughs> so it's uh, you know a matrix sigma i j of s. It's a n by m matrix. Okay, n by m matrix. Then I can put all these stochastic integral differential equations into a single stochastic differential equation in vectorial form. So what would be the vectorial form of it? So it's going to be x t as a vector is equal to x a plus a to t u s f of s mu mu s but mu of a to t mu of s ds plus a to t <coughs> sigma of s n okay and now summation with the lagana summation with the lagana so we need to make the same matrix but vectorial forms you don't have to say it's just a vectorial form so imagine i have you know, a set of processes that, you know, with this notation, I'm saying that now I have a function f that not only depends on t, but it depends on, you know, these n processes. Okay. So the n processes. And I want to know what would be the dynamics of this process. Okay, the dynamics of this process. So what will be the dynamics of this process? Simple. Apply Taylor expansion. Okay, so we're going to apply the Taylor expansion. And uh, what are you going to get? So the first thing you're going to get is um, uh, so the Tf is going to be equal to partial by partial T. D. Okay. D. Okay. And obviously, this is uh, depends on x1 of t and x n of t dt, right? Then plus the derivative with respect to each of these. There's nothing like with respect to each of these processes, but you know, you know say that you have the partial f by partial x psi. The tumblers. Okay. And then. I runs from 1 to n, and each of these partial f by x size depends on x uh, e of 1 up to x t of n times d x t i. And what is d x t i? I know it from here. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Okay. Plus, what would be the, you know, uh, last term? The last term is going to be one half plus a double sum. So this is going to be a double sum. You know, sum over the first index and then sum over the second index. Okay. So i equal to, you no, know, i j equal to one to n. Okay. And partial to f by partial xi xj okay. and everything is a function of e x t one up to x so this is this is really the equal lemma okay this is really the equal lemma ah okay so you, you also have to do the d x i and d x j so if you 
want to explicitly find k to the lambda, just take these and substitute it here. So I'm not writing that messy expression that you're going to get, but ultimately that's how you're going to find you know, uh, the dynamics of any function that depends on any process actually. Figure? So, so imagine I have a two stochastic processes which satisfies ETO processes, satisfies certain different equation. I want to know that what is dxt yt. So I'm going to find it. So I'm going to take f of t x y equal to Simple x y. Simple x Alright. And then dx t y t is going to be what? Partial f by partial t. So this term, there is no going to be such term. Zero. Okay. And then differentiate with respect to each of the variables, with respect to x and with respect to y. Y t. So if you if you for example differentiate it with respect to x, then so you're gonna have y t y t dx t plus second term is going to be uh, differentiate with respect to y and multiply with x. So uh, x t dy t. So so these are the only two terms going to survive. And what will be the third term that is going to survive from here? Okay, so we need a ETO table for this actually. ETO rule table. So what would be the ETO rule table? The ETO rule table is going to be this. So I write it here. Here is the ETO rule table. That says that if you want to multiply what D W I of E T T with say D Wj of t Wj of t dt and dt Okay? So what would be other terms for you know, dt, dwt are 0, 0, 0, 0 so you know, these three could be 0 So what would be this? So this would be this would be delta ij Independence because of the independence. What is the meaning of first of all? What is the regular rigorous meaning of multiplying D W D W I of T with D W J of T? So you're gonna say take an increment of W I and take an increment of W J and compute its expectation. So if i and j are different, if i and j are different, they are independent actually. Okay. So shall I write it explicitly? So expression would be zero. 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 And if so, the expectation would only survive when i and j are equal. Then you can have w i variance of increment is going to be the variance actually. Yeah. Okay. So, so this will be the case. So what term is going to survive here? What term is going to survive? First of all, first of all, so you have to take the derivative with respect to x first and then y first. So if you take x first and then y first, what are you going to get? One. One, x first and one, one, so it's going to be 1 and then y first and x first one. Okay. so if you're going you to differentiate it 2 times with respect to x 0 2 times with respect to y 0 are you getting the point? so the only those 2 terms will survive so in other words you are going to have plus 1 half 1 term would survive when first you differentiate it with respect to x and then with respect to y and you get 1 and with this what are you going to multiply dx t dy t plus then 
First with respect to y and then with respect to x. Again you can get 1 and dx t dy. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, so finally, what is what is the derivative? The derivative here is the product rule here is x t dy t plus y t dx t plus dx t and dy. Okay. So this this is a really product rule for you to process and. Uh, this one makes really different here from T. So this formula is useful. Yeah. If you have any function, now I can give you any function depending on any number of Brownian motions and processes, you can find the dynamics of it actually. X square y square. So what would be the dynamics of x square y square? X square plus y square. Just apply the formula. Mm -hmm. right. Just apply the formula. Okay. Alright, so since we are you know less in time, so that I would like to end things at you know proving two simple results with a very useful letter, especially when you're doing applications. And it also shows that how these um, you know this this theory of the stochastic processes is related with the theory of PDs actually. So it really provides the bridge between you know, two things, and that's why that's why you have you know two group of kind of people working in, for example, math finance or applications of stochastic finance actually. So some people want to you know solve the problems probabilistically. Some people want to do what? Take a probabilistic problem, turn it into a PD and solve it. Okay, so they want to attack the problem for that perspective. They turn it into PD and solve it. And some want to know, I'm going to directly solve it actually. So both approaches are valid. So now I'm going to write a quickly a smaller, really a small result. I'm going to show the connection between the PD and this. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So here's a little theorem. And, and this thing is basically the section 4.9 from Kapensky. So this is from Kapensky. The previous system falls from you know the other. Relation. Yes. So that's okay. So, so here's the theorem. It says that imagine I have an Eto process. I have a process that has this dynamics dxt equal to a of t dt plus b of t dw of t. So this is the dynamics of the Eto process, where a comma b, a comma b are deterministic. Are deterministic, in other words, there is no randomness in it, and C2 class and C2 class. Okay. No, they are just deterministic, not having the dancing, but yes. When I'm saying they are Eto process, this is Eto process, then I know that A and B from L to A, D actually. Okay? So, deterministic and I have a function F. Okay? F that is F is. C12 class function actually. So with respect to time, you can differentiate it once, and with respect to space, you can differentiate it twice. C12 class function that satisfies 
this PDE, which is basically called sometimes Fokker Planck. Fokker Planck. You know, PDE. Okay. And the PDE is this actually. So partial F by partial T minus A, partial F by partial X, and maybe you can write plus partial F by partial X plus B square over 2, partial 2F by partial X2 equal to 0. So it satisfies this PDE, which is really, I mean, if you, if you get rid of this, this is heat equation. It's really a, a version of a diffusion equation. Alright, so I have I have a heater process and I have a function. Right? That satisfies this. Then conclusion is this that if you take this function, so any function that is of C1 class and satisfy this equation, and you take that function and substitute this process into it. Substitute this process into it. This process is a local martingale. That's a local martingale, right? By the way, I must say here that explicitly that this A and B are from this calligraphic L2A, right? They are the key part and It's from calligraphic L2A. So they're deterministic, so ah, no, okay. L2AB. 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 L2AB, both by default only. By default only. Okay, this is, this is good. There's a local martingale A keys. Second, if you further assume that partial f by partial x is, is in L2 AD, okay, partial f by partial x is in L2 AD, then you can even conclude that this ft xt is a martingale. Partial T plus 
a partial f by partial x plus b square by 2 so left means partial x to the partial x and ds at two. okay so everything is depending on s and w of s okay right is it okay? plus so i'm writing the integral element integral form generalized integral element integral form okay Plus, what would be the next thing? The next thing is going to be okay. Partial f by partial x evaluated at s w of s and w of s. Okay. Now think about it. I'm assuming that f satisfies this differential equation, so this is gone. This is gone. So your f t x t is equal to simply some constant plus or maybe some random variable, fixed random variable plus stochastic integral. And I know things here, you know, um, so, so that's, a, that's a stochastic integral for a process that is in calligraphic L2 AD, so that's a local martingale. Okay, so local martingale is necessarily proved to you. And if you assume that this deterministic, this you know, do not, uh, is uh, is an uh, integrand is in in this L two A D, then that's a martingale. Yeah. So that really completes the proof. There is no proof on this. Okay. <coughs> That something is a local local martingale or martingale or not. Just just see that. So if I have a process actually that depends on another process and it just satisfies this PD. So you're gonna the drift goes to zero. This. Yes. If the drift goes and to zero. Local For example, here's an example. Here's an example of an exponential martingale. Actually. Example of exponential martingale. So so consider this. This process M T that is E to the sigma, sigma is a fixed number W of T minus sigma square over T E F two. Okay? Take this process. Now if I take for example F T X, so what is F T X? So F T X is really E to the sigma X minus sigma square over T. This is my I can show that this satisfies this PD. You can, you can really check it that it satisfies this PD. Okay? Then, uh, my claim is that this is a martingale actor. Yes, so the only condition that you need to verify is that its first order derivative must be in L2AD. In order to be in L2AD, and you have to keep in view. Here I am using just one consistent notation. While if you see in the capacity books, it, it, you know he calls it L2 AD as M2, space M2. Okay. So which is I am just keeping one consistent notation actually, but it means the same. Again. Okay? So you can you can show easily that you know just compute the partial derivative of x. Okay. What would be the partial derivative of with respect to x? So it's going to be the same f e x t and sigma. So this is going to be okay. And then you have to, in order to show that this is in L to a d, so you have to do a to b and compute the expectation of the sigma f t w of t e square actually dt. And show that this is fine. You can show it easily. It's 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 shown in the book actually. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Okay. Sir, what about the second part? Have you given argument here? If partial f by partial x is in L two AD, then martingale. Martingale. So the local martingale. Because we know that the stochastic integral for you know L two AB is martingale. L two AD is martingale. But for calligraphic L2 AD, it's a local matrix. Okay? In Kapensky book, 
it uses you know for this it uses notion m2 and for this it uses notion p2 so you have to be careful when you are reading it okay so let me end at 